The area now occupied by the town of Shannon was once unprotected from the river. Over the centuries, embankments were put in place and the land became productive, though sparsely populated. So, Shannon is a 20th century town built on this ancient rural landscape. A few years after the Great Famine, the Griffith valuation records tell us that the townland of Tullyvariga had 10 occupied houses. These were located mainly along the roadway, now known as Shli Namara. Around the year 1847, in the height of the famine, John and Bridget Hastings rented the farmhouse and 28 acres at the end of this roadway from Matthew Canney, whose family owned most of the townland. Three generations of the Hastings family lived in the house and three brothers emigrated to Australia in the 1880s. The youngest of these, Stephen, left here in 1886. All the descendants of the family, bearing the Hastings name, descend from Stephen and are all to be found today in Australia. The last inhabitants were John Hastings and his wife Maggie, who lived here in the old farmhouse until 1968. The house burnt down in 1972. By 2012, the house site was almost unidentifiable. A group of volunteers, organised by Dukas Nishana, cleared the site of vegetation and the footprint of the farmhouse emerged from the undergrowth. Conservation work was undertaken and the ruin was rescued and made safe. An information board was erected. Hastings site became a local historical landmark within the town. By 2019, it became clear that the 2012 conservation work, although best practice at the time, was inadequate and the state of the cob walling was deteriorating. An expert report was commissioned and the recommendation was that the only long-term solution to, to this problem was a complete reconstruction. It is planned to accomplish this through a series of training courses in traditional building techniques. The courses will be led by an accredited conservation training specialist. The question arises as to what the restored buildings will be used for. First and foremost, the restored house and outbuilding would be a new community asset and could serve as a heritage centre with exhibition space and a location for a permanent audiovisual presentation on Shannon. Shannon lacks a community meeting space and the restored buildings could fulfil this need. The heritage site and garden would be a valuable addition to Shannon's looped walks and provide a tourist feature. To fund this project, Dukas Nishana as custodians of the site are setting out on a fundraising mission. It is hoped that support for the restoration will come partly from grants, from personal and corporate donations and from other fundraising activities. One of the reasons why we're so enthusiastic about this project is because of the very interesting history that's attached to the farmhouse. 2020 marks the centenary of the capture of Brigadier General Lucas, a high-ranking British officer captured by the IRA during the War of Independence. General Lucas had arrived in Ireland on the 1st of November 1919 when he assumed command of the 16th Brigade of the Fermoy Military Barracks. Having married late in 1917, General Lucas was a reluctant soldier. He would have preferred a post on the police force in England. He wanted nothing more than to settle down with his then pregnant wife and live a quiet life. On the 26th of June 1920, the IRA captured Brigadier General C.H.T. Lucas along with two colleagues, Colonels Tyrrell and Danford, while they were on a fishing expedition on the River Blackwater outside of Fermoy County Cork. 
Liam Lynch, Brigade Commandant of Cork No. 2 Brigade, hoped that the capture of a high-ranking British officer would leverage a prisoner swap for Michael Fitzgerald, who was on hunger strike in Cork jail. They set off in two getaway cars, one of them being Lucas's own overland tourer. General Lucas and Colonel Danford were in the second car, guarded by Liam Lynch and Paddy Clancy. An escape attempt resulted in a serious injury to Colonel Danford. The captors soon regained the upper hand and it was decided to leave Colonel Tyrrell on the roadside to attend to the wounded officer. General Lucas and the rest of the raiding party continued their journey. Despite the best efforts of the British Army, the IRA, with their prize captive, managed to elude discovery. Throughout the following month, they moved the General throughout North Cork and West Limerick, staying in safe houses along the way. We're here on the Clare side of the Shannon Estuary and early in July the capturing party made their way across the Shannon Estuary leaving from Ringmoylan Pier on the Limerick side and landing at Bunratty just about a mile upriver from us here. The General was held first in Hogan's of Moy Hill just south of Bunratty then transferred by boat to Corbett's in Bunratty then on to Brennan's in Clonmoney, before finally making their way into Hastings Farmhouse in Tullyvariga. Hastings is in a very remote location, close to the estuary. General Lucas spent a good deal of his captivity in County Clare, uh, guarded by the East Clare Brigade under the command of Michael Brennan. Here at Hastings, he spent a few quiet days was moved back to Brennan's and then moved quickly to Hartigan's house at Dunas. From Dunas, the party crossed back into County Limerick. At the end of that period, realising that keeping the general hidden was futile, it was decided to allow him to escape. Lucas walked all night in the rain and arrived in the morning at Palace Green or IC Barracks. His ordeal was over and he returned to a hero's welcome in Britain. The general was used to activity and he found his days long, but he spent his time writing letters to his wife and playing cards with the guards. As an officer, he claimed his right to rations that included a bottle of whiskey a day. He even engaged in a spot of salmon poaching while on the river while staying at Dunas. It was almost certainly why here at Hastings that General Lucas engaged in saving hay, an activity he asked to participate in in order to get some exercise. An intriguing aspect to the story of the capture of General Lucas is the high regard that developed between him and his captors. Witness statements consistently refer to the general as a likeable character and he refers to his captors throughout as delightful people. Perhaps the single most important element that signified this high regard was the fact that at great danger to themselves, the IRA facilitated an almost daily exchange of correspondence between the general and his young wife. General Lucas's wife, Poppy, had given birth to their first child prematurely, early in his captivity. The letters written by the General to his wife throughout this period survive in the Lucas family archive, and in them he refers to how well he has been treated. Afterwards, when asked by a newspaper reporter about his period in captivity, he said simply, I was treated as a gentleman by gentlemen. The capture and imprisonment of General Lucas is remembered locally. John Brennan of Clonmoney recalls hearing his father James talk of playing bridge with the general and in return taught him how to play the game of 45. James spoke of the speed and dexterity with which General Lucas dealt the cards despite having lost two fingers in an earlier accident. 
A well-known photograph showing General Lucas seated with four of his captors, including Michael Brennan of the East Clare Brigade, was probably taken at Brennan's. Jack Hogan, born in 1922, recounts that his father, Tom Hogan, was the first to hide General Lucas on the Clare side at his home in Moy Hill. Jack recounts hearing about how the exchange of correspondence between him and his wife was organised. Lucas was given a code name, which he passed on to Poppy to address letters to. These were then intercepted in the post office in Limerick and delivered to the general. Jack's wife, Nula, recounts hearing about how Jack's aunt was given the task of cycling to Limerick to buy the general a jacket as he was still wearing the fishing clothes in which he was captured. While the capture of General Lucas did not achieve the hoped for outcome, it was a propaganda coup for the Irish rebels. The British army was hugely embarrassed at being outmaneuvered by the IRA and the episode became the subject of a popular ballad. Twas over in Rathcarmack, near the town of Sweet Vermoy. They captured General Lucas and away with him did fly. They said you are our prisoner and this you've got to know. You can't do Greenwood's dirty work where the Blarney roses grow. Can anybody tell me where did General Lucas go? He may be down in Mitchellstown or over in Mallow. He's somewhere in the county Cork, but this I want to know. Can anybody tell me where did General Lucas go? When conservation work was carried out on Hastings Farmhouse in 2012, Ducas Nishana was honoured that Ruth Wheeler, granddaughter of General Lucas, and Aideen Carroll, granddaughter of one of his captors, Sean Moylan, attended the open day ceremony. Ruth and Aideen enthralled the assembled audience with their family reminiscences of the events surrounding the imprisonment of General Lucas in 1920. The story of the capture, imprisonment and escape of General Lucas during the War of Independence provides a little light relief in what was otherwise a bitter and terrible conflict. If you would like to donate to this restoration project, contact details will be shown at the end of this video. Now to conclude and finish, I hope it won't be long, till we see all Ireland free again and the RIC men gone. And when they free our prisoners and tell them they may go, we'll do the same for Lucas where the Blarney roses grow. Can anybody tell me where the General Lucas go? He may be down in Mitchellstown or over in Mallow. He's somewhere in the county Cork, but this I want to know. Can anybody tell me where the General Lucas go?